if God got me through Monday because I had some stuff to deal with. I'm not talking about me only. If God got you through a Monday, maybe Monday wasn't so bad, but you had to get to Tuesday. Tuesday was kind of a good day, but Wednesday, the hump day, you had some difficult times. Thursday, somebody got on your last nerve. Friday, you thought you needed a drink. Saturday, you just think you can party, but somehow something happened and you made it to church on Sunday. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I've come to thank God that the Sabbath was made for me and that I wasn't made for the Sabbath because on the Sabbath, that's when God shows even more love. Can I get five people to say, he loves me more on the Sabbath. God's love is to everybody. God loves the good. God loves the bad. God loves the ugly. God loves the well. God loves the sick. The sick can come. The ugly can come. The bad can come. The worst can come. The disconnected can come. The disrespected can come. They all get room in God's house. Even when somebody doesn't want them to sit by you, God says, here's a seat in my house. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan had kept bound for 18 years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what has bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. This is the word of God for we the people of God. I need you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, Bent and all out of shape is not what you think. Say it again. It's not what you think. You may be seated. Father God, I pray that you would search my heart, try my thoughts, and when you find things in me that are in your way, destroy the flesh, hide me down behind your cross, and use us for this preaching moment. The thought that came to me was, it's not what you think. Blew me away because of the condition of this woman. She was bent and all out of shape. The idea is here, we can get the truth of God bent and out of shape. Young people say we got it all twisted. Can I get a witness? Sometimes we see something and we immediately draw a conclusion that that what we see is what it is. And so is the case of our text. They got bent and out of shape. Who got bent and out of shape? Look at me, let me talk to you. We got a woman who for 18 years had an infirmity that left her body bent over, out of shape. And yet, this woman shows up in a worship service. And there are folk who are looking at her because to them, she shouldn't be there. In the Old Testament and New Testament, those who had deformities or had any illness or anything that was visual was not permitted to come into the synagogue. Right. 
or the temple. If you remember, before Jesus turns over the money changes, he turns it over in a section where only those who were maimed, those who were physically challenged or was marred, they had a section just for them. But the hungry, money, greedy people thought that was a good place to set up table. I need somebody to say, Jesus got room for everybody. But sometimes the church doesn't. Well, I'm going to get in trouble today. Amen. I said, Jesus got room for everybody. But sometimes the church doesn't. Come on, in Acts 3, there was a man who was crippled. He was not allowed to enter into the church. He had to sit outside and beg. Can I say this, I am? Don't look too far back into the scriptures. We still got churches where everybody is not welcome. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble here. Amen. And then you got those who are made to feel welcome until somebody steps on their toes and gets them all bent and out of shape. Do I got anybody listening to me right now? Look at the text. The religious leaders believe that Jesus disobeyed, disrespected, and defiled the commandment of God of keeping the Sabbath holy. The leaders of the church were upset, verse 14, were indignant with him healing on the Sabbath day. They took the scripture in Exodus 20:10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work. The Lord bless the Sabbath day and hollow it. Old Testament law prevents any work on the Sabbath day. Religious rules are to be respected. And then our first point is clear. They are upset with Jesus because he healed on the Sabbath. And the Sabbath required no healing. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not what you think. So don't get all bent out of shape. I'm going to pause for a moment. Amen. I want to let that marinate. Amen. I've never seen it so much, but in churches where if you mess up the worship guide, folk get all bent and out of shape. You don't spell their name right on a certain program day, or you miss their day, or you don't follow the order of service the way it's written. Some people can't even get through the rest of the service because they all bent and out of shape. But I want you to know it's not what you think. I got to preach this thing. Isn't it interesting that the woman was bent and out of shape physically, but there are those who look like they straight, but their minds, their heart, their spirit, and their souls are bent out of shape. Oh, you don't have to praise God. I'm not here for y'all to say, oh, pastor, preach it. I'm just going to call it like it is. Somebody mad at you for sitting by them. Somebody getting bent out of shape because you fanning too hard on them. Somebody just got bent out of shape because they opened the windows. Somebody's been out of shape because I'm going to take too long. So if you're going to get upset, you better just get out of here right now. You want to go see the Super Bowl? You ain't going to hurt my feelings. Go get your Super Bowl on right now. Because I got news for you when the game over and when you're in trouble, Cam Newton can't help you. I wish I had one amen. Amen. Some of us won't even praise God when he deserved praise. So we get mad at others who praise him too loud. 
getting all bent, out of shape for nothing. Be careful, you all. They're upset because he healed on the Sabbath. And they're so out of shape with their minds, with their thoughts, with their attitudes, because they're saying, but the law said. Tell your neighbors, hey, the law said. You're not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. It's not what you think. You're not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. And some of us might agree with them. Wait a minute, Pastor. Jesus, the text says, he healed her on the Sabbath. And the Sabbath, we just heard, you're not allowed to do any work. It's a day of rest. So you're not to heal on the Sabbath. And if Jesus is who he says he is, and the Sabbath is to be honored, is to be hallowed, and Jesus represents God, the faith of Christianity, right. Judaism, how is it he violates the law? Look at your neighbor and say, don't get out of shape yet. It's not what you think. The Bible reminds us, be careful. Amen. I believe it's Mark 7, 1, how you judge somebody. For the way you judge them is the way it may come back and judge you. I need somebody to say, just because you see it that way doesn't mean it's that way. I'm going to preach this in a minute. When we see things in the natural eye, we can misinterpret spiritual insight. We can get so caught up on the written word, we forget to see the spirit word. Can I get a witness? Jesus talks about we're so caught up on the letter of the law, we forget to see the spirit of the law. I want to teach y'all, look at me, because we get caught up in that. People see somebody and they think, uh oh, First, they'll ask themselves, did I just see what I think I saw? Did I just see so-and-so go in that place? All right, preacher. Ain't she a Christian? Wow. And isn't that a place that Christians shouldn't be in? I can't wait to tell somebody that I saw the deacon go into the bar. Oh, I can't wait to tell somebody they went in that convenience store and that's where they sell the I, I, I know what I saw. They got in that car and they rode off together. I want you to holler back and say, it's not what you think. Be careful before you draw conclusions. Folk get bent out of shape because even we misinterpret when people sometimes are trying to give us encouragement. In my day, in my day, a parent of another child could admonish any child that was misbehaving. Can I get at least one amen? And, 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 and then somebody could say something and the parent was ready to listen more to another parent. Amen. But now if you try to say something, they misinterpret what you're trying to do Look at your neighbor and say, it's not what you think. Don't get bent out of shape. I'm going to give you one more. Be careful how you let somebody bring you a bone. Somebody can't wait to bring, the expression is, bring you some information. Amen. And tell you what somebody else is saying about you or what's going on in your business and try to get you all caught up 
and something you don't have any business getting caught up in, then they got a feud going on. Somebody over here can't stand somebody over here because somebody right there told somebody over here what somebody said over there and it don't even have any truth to it. Can I just pause for a moment and say, neighbor, it's not what you think. So you ought to back up. Don't get bent out of shape and wait till you get to truth of the matter. They look at Jesus and they are upset with him because he appears, he appears to be violating the law. And while he is violating to them, he wants us to understand it's deeper than you think. The natural eye only sees it one way. But until you get God to open up your eyes, your mind, and your understanding, don't be quick to judge what you think you saw until God reveals to you what the truth of it is. Some of you can't stand each other because somebody didn't lie on you. Some of you can't stand somebody because somebody's jealous with you. Some can't stand because you know what? You're letting the enemy get you bent and out of shape. Then it dawned on me, maybe Jesus did it because he knew they would get bent and out of shape. And so he wants them to see. That's why he's here. He's here to heal those who are bent and out of shape. I want somebody to say, Lord, I need your help right now. Don't worry about who's sitting by you. Say, Lord, I need your help right now. Because I've let myself get in some stuff that got me bent and out of shape. And I need to learn how to stop allowing that to happen in my life. And since you can straighten that woman up, I want you to straighten me up. Now I want to see if I can get some real folk. Is there anybody in Zion that God needs to straighten up? And you're not ashamed to say, I need him to do some straighten up in my life. Does God need to do some straighten up in your family? Does God need to do some straighten up in your private, spiritual, and public life? And if you're not ashamed, say, I came here today for God to straighten up some mess in my life. You know what gets to me? Some are still sitting there saying, well, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> what, they, what they all shouting about. What they all praising God. I would be too ashamed to tell somebody I need to be straightened up. Well, the Bible tells me if you confess your sins, <laughs> that's when God can heal you of your sin. But when you act like you ain't got no sin, oh, you a hot mess. Because if the truth be told, we all need him to straighten out some stuff in our life. And so we have enough for him to already work on than to let us get bent and out of shape over what we think it ought to be. And that's what I said, what we think it ought to be. There's a way that seems right. But the end thereof is death. The way we think it ought to be. We draw conclusions on the way we want it to be or the way we think it ought to be. And what he's trying to show us, it's not what you think. It's what God says the way it ought to be. And they're saying, but didn't the law say? Did not the law say we can't work on the Sabbath? Tell your neighbor, say, this thing is more than you think. Say it's not natural. Say it's spiritual. They're saying he was wrong. But I got news for y'all. Would Jesus want us to see that although the law says there's no work that should be done, Jesus makes it clear and says, but it's all right to show mercy on the Lord today. It's all right to show, it's all right to demonstrate the mercy. Look at your neighbor and say mercy is God's kindness bestowed on us. Mercy is God showing compassion on us. Look at what God says to them. Okay, you think you got me. Read the text. You think you got me, but it's not what you think. And I like what he calls them, 
So, Lord, can I say it? You hypocrites. All right. Yes, you had the audacity to say, I violated the law. But which of you that has an animal that may be tied at the stall, but you go and you untie the animal and you take the animal to get some water on the Sabbath day? Why is it okay for you to take care of the animal? Shouldn't this woman who's been tied up for 18 years, if you can do it for your animal, why can't you show mercy for somebody who God has created? Otherwise, where am I going? Some of us don't want God to bless somebody else. We only want him to be blessing us. Some of us are so caught up on trying to be so religious. We want to show other people we honor God so much and they don't honor God enough. They were trying to show Jesus, we honor the Sabbath. And you don't honor the Sabbath. How can you? And Jesus is saying, it's deeper than you think. Deeper than you can imagine. Jesus says, it's not what you think. Jesus said, let's make it clear. And so they want to say, but it shouldn't be done. So he reflects on them. Don't you? Take care of your animals? Don't you water them because it's necessary for them to have a drink? Because they need it? Isn't it necessary that this woman receive God's mercy? Anybody glad that God shows mercy? How many are glad that God don't worry about what people think? I need somebody to praise God right now. Say, I'm glad he's not worried about what I think or what you think. Because if he had to go on what I thought or you thought, there'd be a lot of people still on their way to hell. But thanks be to God for his mercy. Mercy. Yes, sir. Secondly, I got to get you out of here. Another thing is I like what they do. Why they're missing that on the Sabbath, God can show mercy. Because it's not what you think. You're calling it work. And God's calling it blessings. But then they get real indignant. Says, wait a minute. Watch this. Verse 14. There's six other days. You can heal people. All right. Ain't that what we do? Why, why, why can't they just come? And why can't you just heal them? On that day. Somebody said, that's a good argument. Hmm. He knows it's the Sabbath. Let me make it clear. Some of you were in Sunday school. You know the Sabbath is Saturday. You know it's the seventh day of the week. You know that God says six days you, you work, Sabbath you rest. Rest doesn't mean you sit down and do nothing. All right. All right. All right. Let me hurry up and say it's not what you think. Rest means you worship. Can I find anybody who say you worship? Do I got anybody my age who can say when I was a child, come Sunday, we came in the morning and we stayed all through the evening. I wish I had some help. Tell your neighbor, say, we got up, we got dressed, we took our bath the night before. Some of us in the tub with three other people. We put on our church clothes. We had to walk to church. We got in Sunday school. We got in worship. We stayed for BTU. And you bet not say anything, but praise be to God. We came to worship. Oh, somebody would say, that's work. That's work. And then other people saying, that's why I don't come all the time. Because all that ain't necessary. I've got to praise God in a minute. Because I want you to hear me say, yes it is. is. If God got me through Monday. Because I had some stuff to deal with. I'm not talking about me only. If God got you through a Monday. Maybe Monday wasn't so bad. But you had to get to Tuesday. Tuesday was kind of a good day. But Wednesday, the hump day. 
You had some difficult times. Thursday, somebody got on your last nerve. Friday, you thought you needed a drink. Saturday, you just think you can party. But somehow, something happened. And you made it to church on Sunday. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I've come to. Praise the Lord. It's not what you think. Six days. Six days. And then Jesus says in his word, he makes it clear. Neighbor, Mark 1, 27 or 2, 27. He says, don't you know the Sabbath, amen, was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. Somebody say, did you get it yet? Come on, say it with me. Say, did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, God made the Sabbath made the for man. man. God didn't make man, didn't make for, the man. for the Sabbath. Man wasn't made just to worship and rest on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made so man could rest and worship God. Can I get one witness? Yes, Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God is the one who makes it clear that the Sabbath, was made for us. Jesus was not denying God, disrespecting God, or somehow going against the word of God. Jesus was healing by showing compassion on her that for 18 years she had been bound by an affliction. And God wants her to know that he's a God of compassion. If you know that God is a good God, tell your neighbor, say, God is love. I can't hear you say, neighbor, I thank God that the Sabbath was made for me and that I wasn't made for the Sabbath because on the Sabbath, that's when God shows even more love. Can I get five people to say, he loves me more on the Sabbath. God's love is to everybody. God loves the good. God loves the bad. God loves the ugly. God loves the well. God loves the sick. The sick can come. The ugly can come. The bad can come. The worst can come. The disconnected can come. The disrespected can come. They all get room in God's house. Even when somebody doesn't want them to sit by you, God says, here's a seat in my house. Lord have mercy. Somebody said, oh, Usher, please don't sit that person next to me. <laughs> Usher, oh, oh, let me put my coat over here. Mercy. Because I knew that person went. Oh, Lord, I don't like the way that person's dressed. I don't like the way that person smells. I don't like the way that person is. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't. Don't sit him over here. Oh, this seat is safe. Oh, how you going to save a seat in God's house? Man, when we get the glory, ain't no seat just saved. Tell your neighbor, say, God got room. For everybody, I got to preach and get out of here. Say, it's not what you think. Look at your neighbor and say, I may not look good, may not smell good, may not be as educated as you, but it's not what you think. God's been still good to me. The same God that woke you up, he woke me up. The same God that started you on your way, started me on my way. The same God that put food on your table, put food on my table. The same God that got me here this morning is the same God that got you here this morning. You don't want me to sit by you? That's all right. I still got a place in God's kingdom. I tell you why. Because I didn't come just to sit. I came to praise God because God's been good to me. And I don't know what you've come to do. But I've come to praise, I've come to praise, I've come to praise my God because the Sabbath was made for me. Sabbath was made for me. Y'all didn't get it yet. 
doesn't have my name, but it was made for me. I got to go, y'all. But this sister, Bent. Out of shape. Come walking in the church. All right. Somebody wouldn't let her sit on the right side. Somebody wouldn't let her sit on the left side. But she kept on walking in the church. She was bent and out of shape. But guess what? She didn't use it as an excuse. I can't go to church this morning because my back is aching. I can't make it this morning because I can't see in front of me. That sister said, if I can just get to the house of the Lord, because I know that God is no respecter of persons. Somebody say yeah. So they wouldn't let her sit over here. 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 So she just stood in the middle of the aisle. Say yeah. I imagine Jesus didn't want her to sit down because you don't want to be by some haters. Can I get a witness? So Jesus can see her condition. Look at your neighbor and say, he sees my condition and he looks beyond my faults and he sees my need. And I'm going to praise God because he won't talk about me. He won't slander me. He's going to heal me while everybody else rejects me is not what you think. Read the text. I like the way King James says, woman, thou art loose. Say yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm about to get my praise on because the Sabbath said he can't do any work. The Sabbath said he got too many other days he can do his job. Tell your neighbor the Sabbath was made for me. But if you're going to get mad, you can't be mad with me because Jesus didn't violate the Sabbath because the final word is Jesus said, wait a minute. That woman been sitting like that. That woman been bent over for 18 years. And she's one of God's children. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know why God allows me or you to go through what we go through. But God has a plan. It may be one year, maybe two years. It may be 18 years. But they that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. It's not what you think. When he sees you, you'll be able to mount up. Do I got anybody who is loose enough to mount up if God set you free? The Bible says who the Lord is free is free indeed. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. And what I'm trying to say is, the final point is, he says, I'm Lord over the Sabbath. And I'll do what I want, when I want, where I want, and how I want. But let me wake you up. The Sabbath was then, but Sunday is the new Sabbath. And this is the Lord's day. And on the Lord's day, that's when he does his best work. Say yeah. That's why I'm in church today, because I need a blessing from the Lord. Do I got anybody who can say, I need a blessing? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. 
I can't hear you. I need a blessing. So I come to church not to see if you came or if you came or who didn't come. I come to get a blessing from the Lord because I know he don't care who's looking at me. He don't care who's hating on him. He just want to know if I believe in him, I can get a blessing. Jesus said, woman, thou art loose. Sister all of a sudden said, hmm, I feel something in my back. Oh, Lord. She started doing like this. Say, yeah. Sister said, let me see if I can get up. She came up a little bit. Said, that didn't hurt. Came up a little bit more. Saying, that didn't hurt. She got all the way up and said, thank you, Jesus. If God ever raised you up, if God ever lifted you up, if God ever blessed you, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to say, thank you, Jesus. It's not what you think. Don't get bent out of shape. God is great. God is good. And God is worthy to be praised. Now let me make it clear. It's not what you think. He didn't straighten you up so you can just stay in your seat. He straightened you up so you can tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. Do I got any witnesses who are not afraid to tell your neighbor, this is what the Lord has done for me. And so I came here to tell somebody else it's not what you think. So don't get out of shape. Just help me praise God because watch this. Say with me, this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Give God some praise.